listen, those who us who are here, we're going to have some church today, amen? Anybody came to have some church? Anybody came to hear a word from God, amen? That's what we're going to do, amen? So our male course is going to lead us in worship. slumber nor sleep. Yeah. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord's sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from now to this time forth and even forevermore. I read for you the entire 100 and 21st song. May God bless the readers and hearers, especially those who are doers of his word. Shall we pray? Father God, we come now to say thank you. Another day, Father, you've granted, you blessed us to see, but Father, we thank you for another opportunity just to come, Father, and participate to worship you. Truly, you've been good to us, Father. You bless us beyond measure, yes. and we say thank you, Father. Bless this service today. Make it what you would have to be blessed these are your people who are in the sanctuary. Bless those who are viewing, Father, over the air. We thank you right now. Let something be said, something be done. Let me continue to lift their spirit, Father. Let me continue them to grow in you. Father, without you, we are nothing. But with you, everything is possible. Yes. Bless this service. Bless everything this morning. Bless these, your people. Keep us in your care. It's in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Amen.
for you. Amen. Anybody love God just for who he is? Amen. Amen. He's been just that good. Amen. He's been just that good. Amen. Um, we're going to we're gonna receive uh, some, some just quick. I made some announcements before we started, but I want to continue to celebrate our October birthdays. Happy birthday, all October folk. Any October folk in the building? Any birthdays in the building? I see you. I see you sit down there. Anybody else? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We appreciate you. Shout out again to all of you who are attending um, the conference on today with my wife. They're having a wonderful brunch on today. Shout out to First Lady Tanya. Y'all, let's give her a hand. She's, she's not a public speaker. She keeps reminding me. And so she was she was stressing, y'all, stressing. They told her they wanted to speak she for her. Right. Watch this, family. They wanted to speak for her. Ten whole minutes. <laughs> Oh, wow. Tell I told y'all this. Ten old minutes. If you would have saw the stress and the dread on her face. <laughs> I said, ten minutes. She could have rocked that <laughs> with no problems. I said, you definitely couldn't be in these shoes. Amen. <laughs> but but she, she, she is prepared and I'm praying for her that she Amen. not only feels well, but that she does an amazing yes. job on today. So keep her lifted in your prayers. Amen. I want to thank all of the sisters who attended yesterday. We had a chat and chew women's conference here at the church. Amen. Yeah, let's give God yeah. praise for that. My sisters were out on yesterday. And, and from what I heard, they had a wonderful, wonderful fellowship. Amen. So thank y'all for doing that. Our brothers, we're going to be doing those things as well because, y'all, it, it's, it's, it's time out for us just having church and not connecting with each other on a deep level. Amen. I mean, I know that's what church is about, amen. We're a family. We're supposed to connect with each other. So I heard that it was a wonderful time. It was sisters only, so they kicked us out. And uh, they had a wonderful time. So thank God for that. I want to uh, remind you, if you haven't put this on your calendars, put it on your calendars ASAP as soon as possible. Uh, our Loving for Youth Ministry, we're having a family fall festival yep, Saturday, right. October 26th. Ooh. Amen. Let's give God praise bring for that. Amen. Friends. Fall festival for our kids. It's going to be from 3 o'clock. I hope you saw the sign that when you yep. came in, shout out to Sister Setawa, our bring youth ministry leader. Yeah. Um, it's going to be from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. All right, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, October 26th. So if um, somebody, you know, doesn't want to go to Halloween and do those things, you know, I'm, I'm definitely too old to be trick-or-treating. I know I am. <laughs> I don't mind getting the candy, you know. I used to tell my kids when I worked at a K through eight school, I used to say, "Man, whatever candy you don't eat, you just bring it to Mr. Tan on Monday." I'll make sure. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll take it. But my older kids, they don't, they don't, they don't trick or treat at all. So, <laughs> but um, let's we're, we're going to try to give our kids a bunch of candy, have some fun, have some Not food, a bunch of candy. some fellowship, Not a bunch of candy. and we're going to have some healthy snacks as Thank well. Thank you for that part. Well. <laughs> we're some apples too. You know, <laughs> Raisins. You know, and them kids don't want that, but we're going to have some <laughs> healthy snacks from as well. I'm going to just tell the kids, just take it, baby. Just take it. No, don't complain. Just take it. Take it. I know you don't want it. But uh, we're going to do that as well. And on Sunday, amen. Sunday. Ooh. Women's Day is Sunday. Amen. Y'all going to pray that. Women's Day. Amen. Women's Day. Our annual Women's Day celebration is Sunday, October 27th. Uh, Sister uh, Elder Glenda Edwards Wallace will be our guest speaker, and the Women's Day Women's Day colors are all right. The Women's Day colors are orange and cream. All right, orange and cream. If you don't have it, still come to church. All right, you know, gotta say stuff like that in church. Well, you know, give me feelings about all kind of stuff in church. All right, I don't care what color you got on. Come Sunday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and the pledge that we're asking everybody to. Commit to on next Sunday over and above your tithes. It's fifty dollars for our sisters. We want to support the women's ministry, um, so we're going to have a wonderful time on next Sunday. I'm excited about. It. Anybody else excited about Women's Day? I'm excited about. It. Amen. 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 We're going to finish this year off strong. Amen. We're going to finish this year off strong. So let's prepare our hearts and minds to give. As God has prospered us, the Bible declares God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. Amen. If you need an envelope, we already see hands raised already. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. Uh, We'll bring you one if you don't have one. Hey, hey, Mama, good to see you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for our ushers at the door and our greeters outside. Amen. Can we thank God for them? Amen. 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 Such a blessing. Such a blessing to have folk 
at our door, welcoming, welcoming us into the house of God and protecting us and watching out for us. Yeah, man, that, that means a lot. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Uh, if you give it electronically, you can do that as well. If you give it electronically or digitally, should I say, uh, you can give via Cash App or PayPal. Our moniker on PayPal is paypal.me forward slash loving, L-O-V-I-N-G, 4BC, loving 4BC. I know I say that too fast because I say it every Sunday, but paypal.me forward slash L-O-V-I-N-G, the number 4BC. And if you give it via Cash App, it's cash sign, loving, L-O-V-I-N-G, 4 family, Loving for family. It's going to pop up with Loving for 2020. That is the correct account. Uh, Y'all be saying, Pastor, why do you say this every Sunday? Because every single Sunday, somebody comes and say, Pastor, what's the cash app again? So I want to make sure that I make sure that I say it enough times that we can remember it. Hey, Amen. We're going to put that on the program. Uh, put that, putting it somewhere so folks can remember that. Um, but listen, I, I'm proud to, uh, I just came from a church anniversary, and shout out to all the family members and friends, church who came with us, amen, to Progressive, amen. Uh, they celebrated 86 years as a church family, amen. So uh, they allowed me to be their guest speaker on today. Pastor Lawrence Saints here, we had a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, so shout out to all of you who made that sacrifice to come. Um, and uh, the only way a church can be successful, family, is when all of us do our parts, amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The only way we can be successful is everybody do, do our part. Amen? Amen. And I was a young Christian and I didn't have a, a little job. And I used to be cutting grass and I used to be doing all kinds of stuff like that. A little odd job, wa washing cars. I remember my parents made me, they made me give to church. Amen. They say, listen, you get paid, you know, whatever you're getting paid, you make sure you put 10% in church. and You make sure you give to God. Anybody have parents like that who made them sacrifice? Amen. Amen. What it did was it taught us generosity at an early age. We're not looking for a handout to somebody to give and give and give. We know that we are blessed to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. So now when we raise generous children, right? When we raise kids who understand the principles of giving, possibly it'll change some of the attitudes of our young people. Amen. Amen. Instead of trying to take everything and, and get stuff for, for, for nothing, maybe they'll understand that we are more blessed to give than to be on the receiving end. Amen? Amen? Let's go to God in prayer. If you have your gifts, whether it be an envelope, if you're giving, or if you're giving it with an electronic device, whatever means of giving you are giving, lift it up to the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to tell you thank you, God. You've been so good to us, God. You've made so many ways for us, God. If it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be, God. So we come on today to tell you, thank you, God. As we come to honor your word and bring the whole tithe and even an offering into the storehouse, we ask that you would continue to open that window from heaven, pour us out a rich and amazing, a beautiful blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. God, don't just bless us, but bless us so we can be a blessing to someone else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The church of God said, amen. Amen, amen. Our deacons will pick up our gifts on today.
song for me all the day, so I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull a little pastoral privilege. <laughs> Since I'm blessed to have my male chorus twice on, on, on during a month, pulling a pastoral privilege, amen. <laughs> amen, okay, amen.
Jacob's words. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know God will do it? Amen. He will. Amen. He will. He will. Thank you, brothers, for blessing us. Thank you, brothers, for blessing us. There's a word from the Lord on today. Acts chapter number 16 is where we're going to be at on today. Acts chapter number 16. I saw Brother Eddie Kendrick had a birthday. Had the birthday, Brother Eddie. Acts chapter number 16. If you're able to stand, let's stand for the reading of God's word. If you're able to stand, amen. Amen. Not going to be long today, even though we don't have the saints, you know. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, boy. I'll just pray for him. I'll just pray. Can't say what I want to say. Just pray for him. <laughs> Lord, they need some help. They need some help. Um, well, we do have communion on today, so we're going to celebrate communion and commemorate the Lord's Supper on today. Uh, last week we talked about the, the story of one Claudette Colvin, who was the first person that we know of started the Montgomery bus boycott. Uh, you know, she wasn't the face of the movement. Um, and on today, I want to lift up another sister. It may not be known by a lot, a lot of people, but she is very, very powerful sister. And the reason we have many of the, the rights we have today is because of this sister. Acts chapter number 16, verse number 25 says, <clears throat> about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, psalms to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. The Bible says suddenly, let the church shout suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. 
And immediately, the Bible says, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loose. I want to talk from this thought as you take your seat. What do you do when you are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe saying, Pastor, where does that phrase come from? That phrase was made famous by a sister by the name of Fannie Lou Hamer. Amen. Fannie Lou Hamer. She, she was a sister who made a huge difference now that it's time for us to vote. I hope you educate, uh, uh, exercise your right to vote already. Louisiana is an early voting state, so early voting starting here on Friday, I believe. Yeah. Yesterday, my wife and my son, we went to go and vote. Um, she was born in 1917. She's the youngest of 20 children. She spent her life as a sharecropper. She didn't have uh, a lot of huge education. She had little formal education, but even though she had a small education, if you will, she loved to read. She loved to read, she loved to read. And when she was 27, she married uh, Perry Pop Hamer. They tried for a family, but after Fannie Lou had several miscarriages, they adopted two girls. In 1961 family, a white doctor gave Hamer a hysterectomy without her consent. While she was undergoing surgery to remove a uterine tumor, this practice was commonly performed on poor black women and it's called a Mississippi appendectomy. Can you imagine going in for one surgery, coming out with something totally different? Um, she, 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 in 1962, attended a meeting led by the Student Nonviolent Coordinating, Coordinating Committee called SNCC. And this meeting, um, she learned that black people could register to vote. 1962, she learned that. So the next day, she was on a bus with 17 other people, watch this family, headed to the county um, in uh, Indianola, Mississippi. She went to register. Um, she was able to take the, she was made rather, I'm sorry, to take a literacy test. At that time, even though black folk had the right to vote, states were trying to stop us from voting. So what they did was they put tests in front of us. And if you know you lived through that time, you know there were all kind of crazy tests that they put in front of us. You had to at some times look at a, 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 a jar of cotton balls and they would tell you to guess how many cotton balls are in the jar. And if you guess wrong, then you weren't allowed to vote. Silly, stupid tactics like that to keep us from exercising our right. She says that of course, she couldn't pass the test. And at that time um, in Mississippi, if you were registered to vote, your name and your address ran the paper for two weeks. Here's what they did. If you ever did pass the literacy test, they will put your name in the newspaper. Hear me, child of God. They will put your name in the newspaper and your address in the newspaper. You know why they did that? Because they wanted the Ku Klux Klan to know where you lived. This is how Medgar Evers was killed as well. And, and, and y'all, um, she, she went through so many things. On her way home, um, those 17 people were stopped by the police who said, they're, watch this family, they were stopped by the police because um, they didn't have a reason. They weren't speeding, they weren't doing anything wrong. But the reason that the police gave them for stopping the bus, they said the bus was the wrong color. They made them pay $100. She finally made it home, uh, um, and, and y'all, she, she at the time was living on a plantation, and the plantation owner already knew about what she had done, and she told Fannie Lou, she says, that if you didn't withdraw your resignation to vote, you would have to leave off this place. Mm. They asked her, uh, uh, why, why did you leave off that plantation? She says, I didn't go down there uh, to register for him, I went down there to register for me. Amen. I wish I had somebody who had this lady's strength. 
And y'all, after that, she went to the Baptist church. And she, even though she'd been ordered off the plantation, she went to the Baptist church. She says, I went to the church, and that's where I found my tribe. She says, at the church, we sung freedom songs. I wish I had a witness in there. She says, somebody played the piano. And, and she, 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 she said, even though they kicked me off the plantation, she says, what they don't know was is that they set me free. They thought it was the worst thing that could happen to me, but it really was the best thing that could ever happen to me. She says, now I'm no longer working on the plantation. Now I'm a member of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And now instead of working for peanuts and working for pennies, I'm now working for my people. Mm. She, 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 she began her work in Mississippi registering folk to vote and it was in 1964 at the Democratic National Convention that Fannie Lou Hamer rose to national prominence. Many of you lived through this time, you remember that convention was torn in two because um, the Mississippi uh, voters said, listen, you, you're going to see us as full citizens. Her uh, and the other activists, they were a part of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And because blacks were denied the right to vote in Mississippi, um, the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party argued that the state's Democratic, uh, Democratic delegates were not legally elected. So what they did was they said, we're going to protest this vote. We're not going to allow allow you to, to, to cast your vote for the Democratic presidential nominee because people at home cannot vote. Here's what I'm trying to get over to you. She was all right, but she didn't uh, allow um, her success to make her forget about the people at home who could not vote, y'all. I wish we would get that in our minds. Unless all of us are free, none of us are free. I was saying, unless all of us are prospering, none of us are prospering. And he asked her, um, this, you may have seen this video. I want you to Google it if you have not seen it. Go and watch this video. Um, they asked her about her experience at the convention. They says, tell me what it's like to get registered in Mississippi. And you see Fannie Lou Hamer in black and white. She's a, she, she, she's a beautiful black sister and she's telling about her experience. She says, um, I went in 1962 uh, um, to try to go register. But she says, also in 1963, I had to deal with a jailhouse beating. They put me in jail. She had been working with other activists to register folk to vote, and this group was unjustly arrested. Fannie Lou Hamer was put in jail where two other prisoners, watch this family, were taking, they, they, they made the prisoners in the prison take turns beating her. In the prison, these two grown men are beating on her. She suffered, watch this family, permanent kidney damage. She had to deal with a blood clot behind her eye, and she lived with a permanent limp for the rest of her life. All of this on the account that she wanted to register and become, watch this family, first class citizens in these yet to be United States of America. Yeah. Fannie Lou Same, at the, at, at the end of her speech, she says, is this America? Is this the land of the free and the home of the brave where we have to sleep with our telephones off the hook because our lives are being threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings? Is this America? Oh, uh, Lyndon Johnson, uh, um, he, he was able to talk to some folk and Dr. Martin Luther King had to step in and, and all of them had to do everything to try to get these people together. But I love this sister. She had a wonderful testimony that even though they tried to lock her up, even though they tried to silence her voice, uh, her voice was heard more than any y'all hear me child of God when God is on your side I wish I had a witness in here I don't care what the enemy has planned what kind of prison they try to put you in how many of y'all know God's going to have the last word I wish I had a the God will have the last word that's why you want to be excited watch this family to vote for the first African American female president of the year. I was at a witness in there. That's why you ought to be, when, when you go to the poll, you want to think about September Clark. You want to think about Fannie Lou Hamer. You want to think about Megan Evers. You want to think about people who had their lives on the line for you. And how dare I say that we're not going to cast out the devil. It is a lie. If you can go and watch TV, if you can go and watch the Saints game, surely you can go and push a button. Anybody know what I'm talking about in here? We got to stop making excuses and start exercising our rights. She said in that, that wonderful interview, she says, what do you do when you, when you are just sick and tired of being sick and tired? 
It can feel like that living in these yet to be United States of America. He, hear me, child of God. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, his, his, his compadre, his comrade Silas, they knew something about being in prison uh, for just simply doing what God has told you to do. Here are these, here are these two, 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 two men who are just doing uh, their job. They're just spreading the good news. You think that, that you would get in trouble for doing bad things, but how many of y'all know sometimes you can get in trouble for doing the right thing? Amen. Just helping somebody out. Just doing what you're supposed to do. Here's what they're doing. They, they, they find a sister named Lydia and they, 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 they pray for Lydia. And that's, that, that's one thing that happens in Acts chapter number 16. And then they, they, they're followed all around town by this demon-possessed girl. And this demon-possessed girl, watch this family, she's being controlled by two men. And these two men are using her gift. And, and here's what she's doing. They're walking through town, and all this lady is saying is, hey, 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 these are two men uh, uh, of God. These are two men who came to preach salvation. She's screaming this day after day after day. Eventually, Paul gets sick and tired of it. And Paul says, come out of her. Paul literally tells the demon in her to come out. Of her, when she, when the demon comes out of her, she's now changed. She's no longer under the control of these two men. And once the men find out that they cannot control this sister, they call the police and want to get Paul and Silas locked in prison. Hear me, child of God. Uh, it's dangerous work to get people delivered. I wish I had a witness in here. How many of y'all know when you're trying to get somebody free? When you're trying to help your cousin? When you're trying to help your nephew? When you're trying to help your coworker? How many of y'all know it's dangerous work? Hey, man. The devil, listen, ain't got no problem with you coming to church. The devil ain't got no problem with you lifting your hands. The devil ain't got no problem with you running around church. But the minute you try to get into his business, he got a problem with you. I wish I had a witness in here. The minute you take what you learn in here and use it out there, it's a problem. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about in here? Why is it that you can talk about everything else on your job, but you can't talk about God? Why you can talk about everything else and change this and change that? Everything else is allowed, but don't talk about the devil is a lie. You can't tell me who not to talk about because if it had not been for God, I wouldn't have to do. I have somebody know what I'm talking about in here. You can call me in the office all you want but if you call me in the office, I'm going to tell you, it's nobody but Jesus who gave me this opportunity. Nobody and guess what? If you don't like me on this one, God's going to give me another one. Do I have somebody in here? Paul and Silas messed up the money, if you will. And y'all, here's what happened. Here's what happened. They got put in prison. They got beat with a stick, with a rod. They got beat, um, and they got put in prison. Here it is. Um, Paul and Silas, they chose, watch this family, to devote themselves in prayer and praise. And I want to tell you, family, even if you feel like you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, one of the first things you have to do is stay devoted to God even in your darkest moments. Huh. Even in your darkest moments, I want to tell somebody in here, I know the sun is shining right now, but how many of y'all know we're living this life for God uh, when you're trying to do right and all you get is wrong? How many of y'all know you're going to go through some dark moments in your life? Amen. <laughs> You're going to go through some dark moments. Here's what they do. They beat them. They arrest them. They put them in a holding cell. And after the holding cell, then they put them in the middle of the prison. They lock them up and stock. they treating them like they're horrible criminals. All they did was preach the good news of Jesus Christ. They locked their hands. They locked their feet. And at midnight, the Bible says, after all that, God was able to change their situation. Let, 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 let me take apart this text right quick and we're going to get out of here. He, here's what he says. Here's what he says. He says, at midnight, at midnight. And y'all, when I read that verse, I can tell some of you may not have been familiar with that verse. But hear me, those of you who are familiar with that verse, you should have shouted right there. At midnight, he says. Do you know what midnight is? Midnight is the darkest moment of the night. It's literally the middle of the night. They had been arrested, they had been beaten, they had been bruised, they had been battered, and they had been put in jail. But the Bible says at midnight. I, I gotta stay here for a while because midnight literally means that yesterday is over. And today is starting right now. He, he, here's why midnight is important. Because if midnight 
it is a sign to you uh, that even though you may have beat you, you may have gotten beaten and bruised and battered on yesterday, the good news is you made it uh, to another day. I wish I had somebody here that could tell God, thank you. Uh, listen, I may not have everything I want to have, but thanks be unto God, I made it through everything I went through. Do I have somebody that can tell God, thank you, uh, that today is a new day? And now midnight also says that, that even though it's dark in your life uh, and the sun is not shining, that don't mean the next day has not started. I'm trying to help somebody there. How many of y'all know God does his best work in the dark? Uh, matter of fact, God made you in the dark. Uh, and I, I'm here to let somebody know, listen, just because it's dark in your life uh, does not mean that God ain't moving behind the scenes. Do I have somebody that can praise God in the dark? Uh, I wish I had somebody here who understood. Uh, Pastor, I'm not going to wait until the sun shines, uh, but I'm going to learn how to dance in the dark. Uh, I'm going to learn how to tell him thank you uh, because even though I don't see how you're going to make a way, you're already making a way at midnight. At midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise. Here's, here's what I love about what happened. They learned how to worship in the dark. Amen. And hear me, child of God, if you're going to make it through what you're going through, uh, you're going to have to learn how to praise God even when you're experiencing some pain. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. You got to learn how to sing in your struggle. Yes. You, you, you got to learn. I told you what happened. She was beaten in prison. She was put off the plantation, but then she went to church. And when she went to church, she heard the songs of Zion. She heard the songs of the struggle. She heard, she, she heard, uh, uh, we shall overcome. She heard, deep in my heart, I do believe uh, that we shall overcome uh, one day. She heard uh, the songs, and the songs uh, kept her going. How many of y'all know that's how good God is? He'll give you a song in the midst of whatever season you are in that'll help you keep on going. See, y'all miss your shout because you think praise and worship is just here on Sunday morning. Man, you better learn how to carry some of these songs we sing on Sunday with you on Monday. Do I have somebody know what I'm talking about here? Because anybody can sing the songs here on Sunday, but can you sing these songs on Monday or Tuesday when you're in your darkest moment? Somebody here better learn how to sing it in the dark. You gotta praise him sometimes in your prison. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they and they sung songs. The, the, the praise, the praise, the praise. Hear me tell God that the praise was important, but also the prayer was important as well. Oh, uh, be, be devoted to God. He, he, here's the, the word there for prayer is literally a continuation. Here's what it means. It means uh, not that Paul and Silas prayed when they got in jail. It means that they had been praying the whole time they were there. Their prayer simply was a continuation in the prison. See, y'all, we think that when we get in trouble, that's the time you ought to meet God. No, you ought to meet God when the sun is shining. I wish I had a way. You ought to have a relationship with God while everything is fine. When you got money in your pocket, when you got health in your body, you ought to know God for yourself. So when seasons change in your life, you, you know who you're talking to. I have somebody in here that I'm talking about. Listen, I trusted him when everything was fine, so I'm not going to leave him now that things don't look well. Anybody know him for yourself? That's why you got to pray every man. Jesus says man ought to always pray and not cease. You ought to talk to God. Yeah, see, some of y'all ain't shouting because you ain't talked to God this morning. You got to brush your teeth, put on your clothes, and ain't say nothing to God. The devil is a lie. You got to learn how to tell God thank you. Don't worry about your breath. Tell God thank you. For the day. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for taking care of me last night. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for watching over my family. Thank you for everything. Before I ask you for anything, I'm going to thank you. Be devoted to God in your darkest hour. That's one of the principles we learn. Here's another principle we learn. We got to learn, watch this family, when you're sick and tired, when you're dealing with a situation you don't want to be in, you got to learn how to pray under pressure. Amen. How to pray under pressure. In the midst of our trials, they 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 they, 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 they begin to pray. They begin to pray. They, they had kept on praying. They had been praying and they just kept on praying. And y'all, this is why this is important. It's very important that you pray, that you learn how to sing hymns because watch this family. Um, when you do that, other people are listening to you. Amen. The Bible says they're in prison. They're literally in solitary confinement. They're in the deepest, darkest points of the jail. And while they're praying and singing praises, the prisoners around them 
are listening to their praise. The prisoners are listening to their prayers. Because hear me, family, when God allows you to go through a situation, you got to understand that sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes God wants to help the folk who are looking and listening to you. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about here. Sometimes God is allowing you to go through it because he wants you to leave it with a testimony to tell somebody else about how good your God is. The other folk are listening to them. And hear me, child of God, uh, the people around you, people around you, they're listening to you. They're listening to you complain about everything. They're listening to you cuss like a sailor. Ain't no way, man. And ask yourself the question, what are they listening to? Are they listening to you talk bad about God and talk bad about the church? Are they listening to you having some hope? Y'all listen, as a Christian, as a child of the living God, you ought to live your life with an optimistic attitude, not a pessimistic attitude. You ought to always look at the glass as half full and not half. Somebody know what I'm talking about in here. If you are just like the world and complaining about everything that's happening in your life, there's no difference from you and somebody in the world. But how many of y'all know there ought to be a different disposition? Even though I don't feel well, I'm I'm still, I'm still talk well, even though I don't feel good. I'm still let folk know that God is good. I was had a witness in here. Don't, don't, don't let what you're going through change your language because people are listening to you. Possibly, possibly, possibly they were strengthening the faith of these brothers who were in jail as well. And the Bible says, watch this, family. Here's how good God is. When you pray and when you sing praises to God, God will. Deliver you. Now here's a shout of the text. And then when I when I read this again, it blessed me. Because any prisoner in jail would not pray for an earthquake. If you're in jail, you want to pray, God get me out. God break these chains. God take me out of this place. Watch this family. This text is telling to teach us that they weren't praying to get out. They were praying just because they were there. And God chose to do what only God was able to do. And here's what I'm trying to get over to you, family. When you talk to God, when you pray, when you praise God, you got to let God do what God does. See, sometimes we want to tell God how to be God and not let, I was had a witness in here. God it may not break your chains the way you think he ought to break your chains. God may not get you out of that situation the way you want to get out of that situation. Your, that, that ain't your problem. That ain't your job. That's God's business. Your job is to pray and to praise and let God do what only God can do. Anybody here can say, like the old saints, any way you bless me, God, I'll be satisfied. However you want to do it, as long it's you the one that's doing it. And here's what God did. I'm glad God didn't just break their chains, but God says, I'm going to set you free by setting everybody else free. Lord have mercy. I wish somebody would get this. I wish somebody would get this. L listen, God says, I'm going to set you free by setting everybody else free. The Bible says, here's what happens. A, a great earthquake came, and that word means suddenly. That means they weren't expecting it. That means they were just praying and praising like they always did, and God just showed up. Can you see that in the text? Just suddenly, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I wasn't even praying for this, but God gave it to me. Y'all, sometimes you got to stop apologizing for the good things God is doing in your life, because every Every blessing you have, you didn't pray for it. I wish I had a witness in there. Some blessings God just gave it to you because you got favor on your life. So I can't apologize for everything God has done for me. I don't know why I made it and they didn't make it. I don't know why I'm blessed and they not blessed. I don't know why I have it and they don't have it. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm not going to apologize because God has been good to me. And every time I think about it, I'm going to tell him thank you. Suddenly, the Bible says, Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. The foundations of the prison were shaken. It's very important that this happened. It's very important because I told you their feet were locked down to the prison. Yeah, right, right. And in order for God to really free them, God had to shake some things up. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know, I know we don't like this kind of preaching, but I want to help you here. Every once in a while, God will shake some stuff up in your life. Yeah. I wish I had a witness in here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Every once in a while, God will shake some stuff up. 
Everything might be going fine, and then you 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 get hit out of nowhere with a with a sudden shakeup. <laughs> Marriage is going fine, and then you get hit with a sudden shakeup. Children are doing well, and then you get hit with a sudden shake. Your health is doing well, but then you get hit with a sudden shakeup. Can I help you here, Zion? Sometimes uh, when God allows a shaking in your life, uh, it ain't to take you out, but it might be to shake some stuff off of you. I wish I had. I wish I had a witness in here. It, it might be that you're too heavy. I wish I had. And you, you might be carrying a, a little bit too much. And, uh, and you don't realize, but you can't get to where you want to get to uh, if you got too much stuff holding you down. So what God will do is allow a shaking to happen in your life. Somebody in here ought to tell God, thank you for the shaking. If it had not been for the shaking, I would have held on to people that I should have let go. If it had not been for you shaking my life, I would have, I would have depended on some things that couldn't save me or deliver me. I know you don't like it, but hear me. Hear me. Here's what happened. As the, as the earthquake was happening, uh, immediately their chains were loosened. Not only were the chains loosened, but the doors came open. <laughs> as the doors came open, uh, the Bible says that now everybody's chains were loose. I'm trying to help you here, Zion. You, you don't know the power you have uh, on the inside of you. See, sometimes as God's children, uh, we forget who we are. Your prayers have the power to change not only your situation, but the situation of everybody that's around you. Do I have a witness in here? Your, your praise has the ability to shift some things in your life. And, and y'all, when I get down and out, I, I, I allow the devil to knock me down. But hear me, child of God, the devil can't knock you no lower than your knees. When you get on your knees, that's the best place for you to be. Do I have a witness in here? The only reason I'm saved and in my right mind today is because somebody prayed for me. My mama and my daddy, they prayed for me. My pastor, he prayed for me. The deacons at my church, they prayed for me. And I'm so glad they prayed for me. Is there anybody in here that can tell God thank you? Not for answering your prayers, but I thank you, God, for answering the prayers of my mama. Thank you for answering the prayers of my daddy. Thank you for answering the prayers of my elders who came before me. Anybody here know? standing on the blessings of those who come before you. So what does that mean, Pastor? If I'm standing on the prayers of my elders, then I'm going to pray for somebody else so that when my next generation comes, they can walk on the same blessings that I'm walking on. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, He'll do it for you. How many of y'all know? He'll shake the foundation. He'll shake your situation. And he'll free not only you, but everybody around you. And I don't know about you, Zion, but I need not God only to bless me. But I need God to bless everybody I'm connected to. Bless my nephew. Bless my niece. Bless my cousins. Bless my aunties. Bless my uncles. Don't just do it for me, but do it for everybody around me. Bless my church members. Bless everybody around me. Because when God does it for me, he's going to do it for everybody around me. Some of y'all ain't shouting right now because you're waiting on your blessing. You got to learn how to praise him for somebody else's blessing. Because if God is blessing in the neighborhood, it's just a matter of time before the blessing makes it to you. I wish I had somebody in here that didn't mind praising God for somebody else's deliverance. I don't have it yet, but I'm going to 
praise him for yours. I don't got my breakthrough yet, but I'm going to praise God for your breakthrough. I don't have my blessing yet, but I'm going to praise him for your blessing. Because I know that sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later, my time is on the way. My blessing is on the way. Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he open doors that are closing your face? Won't he do it today? Won't he do it? You want to shout yes? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I've tried him, and I know he will. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Won't he do it, family? I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm getting excited. Because when I think about it, I was in my darkest moment. I was in a horrible pit. That's what the psalmist says. I was stuck down there. I was in the muck and the mire. And God could have left me down there. But can I tell you what he did? I was seeking deep in sin. Far from a peaceful shore. Very deeply within I was seeking to rise no more but yes sir but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe am I somebody asked you how you made it because it was love that lifted me If he lifted you, you ought to lift him up. If he lifted you, you ought to lift him up. If he lifted you, you ought to lift him up. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he's been good to you, it's a good time to praise. If he made a way, it's a good time to praise. Let it out, family. Let it out. You don't know. You don't know. Like I know. He brought me out. Here's what God will do. God, God, God will bless you and bless everybody around you. I've learned how to pray this way, family. I ask God for what I want. I ask in his will. But after that, here's what I say. God, if there's something I didn't ask you for, maybe I'm asking you for something too small. And you want to do more. So I'm always in my prayers by saying, God, if you want to do something I ain't even think about, go on and do it. I don't want to restrict you with my finite mind. Thinking about your, 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 your infinite mercy. I don't want to tell you what to do and block my own blessings. You may want to put me in the prison. That might be your will. Because here's what happened. After that prison experience, Fannie Lou Hamer had a testimony that literally changed the Democratic Party. Did you hear what I said? It changed the Democratic Party. And I know we think that stuff just happens overnight. No, it happens by organizing. It helps by getting together as a people. And listen, when the people get together, we have the power. And I'm not telling you just to, just, just to sit. What I'm telling you is, you gotta vote your interests. We never had a candidate that we liked all the way. I wish I, I'm talking to, I'm talking to poor white, I'm talking to black folk, I'm talking to 
people who, who, who are not rich and then the 1%. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. We ain't never had a candidate that we liked all the way. Amen. Stop falling in love with politicians. Amen. 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 I heard somebody say this the other day and it blessed me. They said, listen, you vote for the person that you can work with the best. Amen. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but listen. You vote for the interests of people who are just like you. Amen. And that's what we vote for. When you vote, you push them. All right? You push them. But I want to tell you, family, if you want to be great, <clears throat> live your life in service of other people. Amen. You'll never hear somebody talk about when they're gone a selfish person. But the reason we lift up names like Mary McLeod Bethune, the reason we lift up names like September Clark, the reason we lift up names like Ida Bell Wells, the reason we lift up names like Fannie Lou Hamer is because they live their lives in service of somebody else. Amen. They helped somebody else. They did something for somebody else. It's not all about you. And you got some folk in your life right now who you know only you can get them to come to Christ. Amen. They, they won't listen to me, but they'll listen to you. And sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone. You know that person I'm talking to right now? You know what I'm talking about? Pastor, they ain't going to listen to me. I done tried. Try again. Try again and again and again. Because listen, when you do that, you don't know the ripple effects you're going to have in changing somebody else's life. Amen. Family, it ain't just about us getting blessed. It's about everybody connected to us getting blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's open the doors of the church. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Is there one on today? He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. He won't give up on you. He's able. The invitation is open on today. If you don't have a church home, this would be a great day to join church. Here's how it works. All you have to do is come forward. We won't put you on the spot. We won't embarrass you. We just want to introduce you to Christ. Connect you with his church. And God will make the change that only he can make. If you're here today, the doors of the church are open. God is able. God is able to do just. Just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill, he's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Tell your neighbor, don't give up on God, don't give up on God, because he won't, because he won't give up on you. He's able. If you're saved, then you know you're saved. Come on, give God some praise, give God some praise, thank you for your salvation. You may be seated in God's presence. At this moment, at this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds to receive the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. Uh, we're going to receive the Lord's Supper. The Bible says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Our deacons are going to lead us, our deacon Daniel is going to lead us in uh, our devotional, our consecration moment. Uh, why do we do this every Sunday, Sunday night? It's important that we, we put our hearts and our minds in the right place when we take the Lord's Supper. Jesus says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We're not doing this just out of form and fashion. But every time we come to this table, every time we receive communion, we remember the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. At this time, the name. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver upon you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, take, I mean, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is in remembrance of me. After that same manner also, he took the cup, which he said, which, which he had 
she had said, this cup is a New Testament of my body, of my blood. This do it, do ye as well. Drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink this bread and eat and eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death until he recomes. Wherefore, whoever shall eat and eat his bread and drink his cup of the Lord unworthily shall be shall be guilty of the body of the Lord of the blood of the, of the Lord. But he but let the man come examine himself and so let him eat and of that bread and drink of that cup. For he for he that eats and drinks unworthily, eating and drinking damnation into him himself, not discerning the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord. Just tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this sermon this morning, Father. As we get ready to partake in your body, Father, continue to bless and keep us. Give us what we stand in need of. In your daughter, son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If this is your first time taking communion with us as a family, let me for what we do is we pass out the emblems. And we'll ask that as you pass out the emblems, you can prepare the emblems, but we're going to take communion together as one family. It reaches to the highest mountain.
soul stand family let's get ready to be dismissed hallelujah never lose his power God for our brothers leading us in worship on the day, our male chorus. Y'all let's give God praise for our male chorus leading us in worship on the day. Thank you so much, brothers. Thank you for pressing your way to worship. Thank you for our women's ministry who went to support uh, uh, Lady Tanner on the day. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you all for pressing your way, amen, to be with us on today, amen. And my, my little brother is here. Not, not that little no more. He's grown now, my little brother. I wasn't blessed with no brother, so I got a bunch of little brothers. So my brother Ashton, Ashton, wave your hand, Ashton. Ashton is here all the way from Tampa, amen, y'all. Thank you. Give God praise for Ashton. Thank you, Ashton. Thank you for pressing your way, amen. Am I going to get a picture with my baby today? I'm going to get a picture with my... We working on that? We working on that? Man, man, man. I'm, I'm, y'all pray for him. Y'all pray. We've been... Amen. We've been talking about this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's receive our blessing and our benediction. What is next Sunday? What is next Sunday? Women's Day. Oh, it should have been louder than that. What's next Sunday? Women's Day. Women's Day. All right. All right. Bring a sister with you next Sunday. Amen. We're going to celebrate our sisters on next Sunday. Let's receive our blessing and our benediction. Father God, we come to tell you, thank you, God. Thank you for blessing us in so many ways on today, God. Thank you, God, for hearing and receiving our praise. God, thank you for answering our prayers. God, thank you for reminding us through the power of your preached word that even when we feel like we're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you are still up to something, God. You are still working things out behind the scenes, and we thank you for whatever season we are in knowing that you are with us in that season. As we leave this place, whenever your presence let your sweet Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible, each and every one of us, see us safely to our various destinations. We love you. We praise you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The church of God said amen. 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 Come on.